Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Alex King, and Bill G. here. Today is Tuesday, March the 5th, 2019. It's 4 p.m. in New York, 1 p.m. in Los Angeles, 9 p.m. in London, Sydney, Australia. It's uh, about 12 noon, actually. Uh, I think I've got that right. No, 8 a.m. in the morning. That's right. Sorry. Sorry, Sydney. Didn't mean to get the time wrong. But wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining <laughs> us for another world, another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And I'm happy to reconnect with my co-hosts, Alex and Bill. Alex, I, I could just tell from the smile on your face you've been having a good few days, but how was your weekend? My weekend was pretty, uh, what did I do this weekend? I don't know. I just asked you. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> that usually means I did nothing. So <laughs> <laughs> I did laundry, uh, watched a lot of TV, and of course. Of course. And yeah, that was that was my week. That was it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, at least you enjoyed it. That seems to be the case. I mean, it's not like you you are saying there was anything bad happening. So no, nope, been, nothing bad happened. So nope. it's good. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> How about you, Bill? How was your weekend? It was great. Uh, my uh, brother and my sister in law came to visit from uh, New York. Uh, they came to do their taxes because uh, <laughs> one of the nice perks about being a tax professional is you get to do your friends and family for free. <laughs> I don't know. And, is that really a visit? That's that sounds more like you know take advantage of the na- of the relatives rather than a visit. Well, you know, I offer. I offer. Oh, you're you know, it's, oh, okay. it's one of those. It's one of those things where I have I have the ability to do it, and so I extend an invitation, and it gets them to come out and visit because uh, they bring my, their um, their nephew. They bring my, they might bring my nephew mm-hmm. to come play with my son, and he, he they had a great time. We okay. got to have some pancakes with some real maple syrup at a place called Sugar and Spice, <clears throat> which is uh, just outside of Killington in Menden in Vermont. It's excellent. And um, it just meant that uh, I had a busy weekend and didn't get around to writing my blog, and I'll do that tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, overall, that sounds like it's a pretty good thing, so uh, we'll just leave it right there at that. Um, now, this is, uh, theoretically, it's a and a If you are listening to the live stream and you want to ask questions or just bring up a topic for us to discuss, go ahead. I, actually, I'm seeing that Shelly, who does the uh, Monday Night Show, said she might hop on, too. So there may be four of us here. This could be uh, Ooh. This, this could be quite the, the thing, but uh, we'll navigate through it. That's all right. <laughs> In the meantime, though, I figured we could just do some more of, of the kind of thing that uh, Alex and I have become really familiar with, and that is posing questions for the group to answer. Uh, we do that a lot on the Friday yeah. podcast with Tom Wells, too. And uh, it, it's proven to be quite a fun format. Uh, I've been doing kind of variations of it with some of the other co-hosts as well. And uh, like anyone who uh, listened to uh, either this morning's podcast or even yesterday morning's podcast uh, or even last night's, too, with Shelly, I mean, we, we start diving deep, deep, deep into the intricacies of how this stuff works. Um, so it, it's sort of it's like an advanced class in Law of Attraction and being a deliberate creator. <laughs> right? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she said kind of hesitantly. <laughs> 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 so with that in mind, Jeffrey actually has the first one. He says, um, what does it feel like living on the leading edge? That's really a question anyone can answer because we all live on the leading edge. Uh, but uh, True. But, I mean, Alex, what does it feel like to live on the leading edge? I don't know. I don't feel like I am living on the leading edge. I feel like I'm <laughs> lagging behind. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't I don't know. I can't honestly say. I okay. can't honestly say I'm experiencing it. So, I don't know. Well, I mean, I can say that I I have a one of my past careers that I still carry on is I still host websites for a number of businesses and nonprofit organizations and that server that I, I own and run, uh, <laughs> an issue came up. And that issue basically was sending out a bunch of emails, and I was dealing with that today. Um, it re- brought to mind a phrase that has been around the IT community for pretty much since IT became IT, and that is mm-hmm. that we don't live on the leading edge. We live on the bleeding edge because when you are dealing with softwares and, and new technologies that have come out, you're constantly bleeding, you know, 
It, it, it's kind of like the joke <laughs> about the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is the person who throws himself off the cliff and then tries to assemble an airplane on the way down before he hits the ground. It's, it's the same kind of yeah. thing with running a server, right? You're, you're, you're constantly mm-hmm. trying to keep up with what's going on and hopefully not get run over so that, you know, everything goes to, you know what, and then what. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think I, it also goes. I think it also goes along with that uh, the le- the the leading edge of technology is such a thin line that it's like a razor blade. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's the bleeding edge, precisely. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, that so I I don't feel like I'm on the leading edge so much, so much as I'm on the bleeding edge. But how about you, Bill? We're, what's it like le- living on the leading edge? I think it's exciting living on the re- leading edge because. I feel like I'm on, I, whenever I'm uh, tuning in and I'm coming up with different ways of doing things, I feel like I'm developing new technologies. I feel like I'm um, learning more about myself. Uh, for example, I've, I'm doing this uh, talk um, with at the uh, National Convention of the American Dow- American Society of Dowsers in Plymouth, Mass- in, uh, not Plymouth, Massachusetts, Plymouth, New Hampshire in June, and my topic is um, clearing writer's block using dowsing. Now, I use a technique of, I, this is the technique that I use for my own writing, and when um, I got the email saying, hey, we like your topic, we're going to do it, I realized that, wait a second, this isn't, the, <clears throat> SR, the, I can't really use the SRT charts for this because it needs something a little more accessible to people who do general dowsing. And so um, I spent uh, Friday, uh, Sunday afternoon developing a new technique, basically coming up with my own set of charts that I could you can use the pendulum for to help with someone's writing if they get if, when they're feeling stuck and whatever. And that way, and the whole purpose of that is to come up with u- new, unique content that is inspired by source, by source energy. Wow! Uh, so you connect you con- connect into source energy, and it gives you the topic in which to write, and then you go from there. You you move it forward from that point. I don't know, Alex. I I think she's he's got his beat in terms of leading edge. I mean that that's like so leading edge that I can't even begin to compete with it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. I, it's, it, it's just ironic that the question came up because you know that's it's something that I've been working on, and I I really feel like it's a a really good tool because um, I don't know it, for those of us who are in the who are trying to build a business or build a brand online um, content is king and con- you and not just repeating other people's content but coming up with your own content and making it unique to yourself and that can be very daunting especially with demands of not only do you have to create new content you have to create new content constantly you've got to con- you you've got to be constantly posting on Instagram you got to be constantly posting on Facebook and whatever just to constantly make yourself uh, relevant and you can't make yourself relevant if you're con- if you're constantly repeating what everybody <laughs> else is saying you have to come up with something u- new and unique and if what you're doing is something that kind of that has gotten kind of routine you need to keep it fresh and but the thing is, source energy, this, the, the, the non-physical world, they got lots to say. Um, you know, Abraham has lots of people, lots of things it wants to say to people. So they're, they're, the message is constantly coming out. And, uh, this is just a way of tapping into that. And so I'm very excited about it. Well, it's, uh, well, actually, Abraham also tells us that everything, uh, they, they answer every question. They, they pose every possible, uh, uh, line of inquiry, but the answer is always the same. You know, so right. does the content really change? I'm not so sure, but no, <laughs> but, no, but it doesn't. It, but it, but, but it's the configuration to to changes. Yeah, <laughs> right. but you can always you can always um, uh, change the uh, you know adjust what the what the what the emphasis is or what the what the focus is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then true. from that point and then that point you can put your own personal spin on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. So okay, well now that we've got the content thing nailed down, let's see if we can actually. Uh, turn some of that content into how to be a better deliberate creator. So with that thought in mind, I'm going to pose, uh, I'm going to put each of us on the spot here and say, let's come up with, with questions for us to address about, you know, how to be a better deliberate creator, some of the kinds of issues people run into and so forth. 
Um, and uh, Alex, I'm going to go to you first because uh, because you usually have something you know kind of hanging on the tap, so to speak. So, what's our first topic to address? How do we become deliberate creators? That kind of thing. Well, first, I want to say hi to Shelly because she just joined us. Oh, hi, Shelly. Hey. <laughs> I'm busy, too Hello. busy doing too many things here. I didn't even say, hey, good to have you join us. That's great. <laughs> I'm the only one paying attention on here. It's cool. <laughs> I keep track of everything. I, I count on you for that because I'm also checking over here for the comments, so I need the support. That's really good. <laughs> oh, that reminds me you didn't press record. I know. Actually, I believe it or not, I did that deliberately this time. I thought about it because I saw oh, okay. your image because that, that's what cues me, right? I see you, so I turn on record. <laughs> Cat but, loves dogs. Yep, but no, I actually I chose not to. I'll, I'll tell you about that after the show, but no, that's fine. Okay. No problem. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so um, my question for today I, was actually something I saw recently on the Law of Attraction Change My Life group, and it said, it was a post that said, how do you, was it, how do you use Law of Attraction to get over a broken heart? So that is my question to y'all. <laughs> but that, that's a very common question. You see that, 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 that's very succinctly put. Most often there's like a long paragraph describing what, yeah. what happened, right? And then it's a, how do I get right. over this? But this is, that sounds very succinct. So that, that's good. That's good. I'm going to then, uh, go to, uh, our latest person to join us, Shelly. I mean, we got to get you into the conversation. So what's your answer on that? How do we, how do we help somebody who wants to heal a broken heart? Um, my answer to that would be to um, get through it first, to so allow yourself to grieve and to be heartbroken and and then to go from that phase um, to do your best not to stay there too long because, of course, that's going to be part of your experience if you're losing someone that you really cared about or Whatever, and to go from that into what your lessons are and what you can do better next time when picking someone, if, you know, you're moving on to that. Mm -hmm. So that would be my okay. advice. To yeah, that's good. How about you, Bill? What do you think? Well, let me think. <clears throat> um, I'm, in a, I'm in agreement with, uh, with Shelly. That you need to first figure out, uh, you know, first live and experience what it is to be, have that broken heart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then be okay with it. And then, uh, work on yourself to make sure that you're okay. And to forgive yourself for getting yourself in the situation in the first place. And forgive yourself for anything that you may have done to whatever, make the relationship a bad one or a good one or whatever. And, uh, and also be okay with that too. And, um, and then move on. Um, and because at, at that point, you can now have the opportunity to change the intention of your next relationship. And your next relationship, you set the intention. And I, in, uh, in my book, I describe how, uh, relationships should really begin with an intention that, um, Whoever it is I'm attracting is going to allow me to grow spiritually. And so um, if you attract somebody who's going to allow you to grow spiritually, that's the kind of relationship you're going to attract, and then that's that's what you get. Um, because too often people are lonely to the point where they're attracting the wrong kind of people in their relationship. And, um, uh, for example, I had a, uh, a client recently who uh, is currently married but is considering divorcing her husband because she's taken this spiritual journey where she's studying meditation and law of attraction and whatever, and the husband isn't. In fact, the husband is um, uh, makes fun of her for all the woo stuff that she does now. Mm. And she feels very unsupported in the relationship now. And she was like, now I don't understand what I found attractive about this guy in the first place. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> because, you know, we used to be on the same page. And now all he wants to do is watch football. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now I don't feel like we're on the same page anymore. And so, you know, we, we doused it. And we found that um, the relationship wasn't hopeless. I mean, there was... 
some patience involved there. There was some personal healing he had to go through, but it really was up to him whether or not he wanted to stay in the relationship because she was still somewhat committed to staying in the relationship. And I said, you know, give it a little more time. Maybe he'll come around. He'll see the example, see the good things that are coming into your life. Just don't base your own self-worth based off of what he is saying to you and what he's saying to you right now because that's not real. That's, you know, who you are is who you are. And if he can't handle it, then, then it needs to move on and you find somebody else who, who will support that. Which does take some doing, no doubt about that. Um, mm-hmm. Alex, I presume you, when you brought the question up, you, you had an answer in mind uh, to bring in yourself. What was your answer for this person? Um, my answer is... <laughs> Uh, Your I'm not going to say my usual, my, my usual <laughs> answer is say, you know, cancel the emotion and move on. But that's <laughs> not, not necessarily healthy in this situation when you're dealing with, especially if it's a, been a long-term relationship, mm-hmm. you want to actually, you, you want to grieve the relationship. You want to, you want to grieve the person. You want to, uh, you know, learn from whatever had happened. So you, I mean, I don't even know if it was you that caused the situation, but, you know, learn from the situation so it less likely to happen again. That's my answer. Yeah, I think you're right. You do have to learn from it. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I love the answers you guys are giving because you're all hitting all really, really good points. The one thing that I thought to add is that uh, from my own experience, from times when my heart was broken, I can say, looking back on it, I needed to learn not only stuff about myself, but I needed to fill in some gaps for myself. One thing that we tend to do, especially early on in life, early you know, early in our adult lives, is we, we have a tendency to try to look for somebody who's gonna fill the gaps for us, not realizing that that's not, not, not a healthy thing to do because mm-hmm. really it's up to ourselves to fill our own gaps. But nevertheless, that's what we tend to do. and. So when we, we find somebody and that somebody seems to fill that gap and then the relationship breaks up, that creates, that, that basically reopens the hole in the heart and makes the wound bigger and the blood is pouring mm-hmm. out more. So it, it's even more painful because we thought that that hole was filled and now it's no longer filled. Um, it, it's a reminder that those holes are for us to fill. It's up to us to be the person who makes ourselves whole, not, not a, a partner. And mm-hmm. it, it's an opportunity. I mean, it's a painful opportunity, but it's an opportunity to grow in a huge, huge way. And ultimately, th- this is really hard to see when you're in the middle of a broken heart. But ultimately, a broken mm-hmm. heart is like a, it's a springboard to some tremendous personal growth and tremendous things happening down the line that you can't even see right now. And, and again, that doesn't really help you when you're in the broken heart mode because, I mean, that just hurts. I mean, everything just mm-hmm. aches. It feels like life has come to an end and so forth. So it's hard to see that. But it really is true. I mean, when you run through, went into that situation and come through it, and especially if you grow out of it, oh, my goodness, the, the improvements that happen in your life can be exponential. So uh, I, I don't know if, if necessarily that can help somebody who's currently going through it, but be be reassured this actually gets much much better it isn't just that your heart heals if you do some work on yourself out of it and growing out of it and and improve yourself as a result you don't just don't just leave it there as oh this terrible thing happened to me and i'll just wait for the pain to go away but if you actually use it as an opportunity it can be a tremendous way to 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 build yourself up and improve your self-confidence over time Um, because ultimately that's what it comes down to if our self-confidence isn't good we that that's when it hurts the most it's when our self confidence mm-hmm. feels good that well yeah I'm sorry that that person left but it doesn't it doesn't tear you apart like it can when you have that really broken heart. So that's my view on it. So good question, Alex. Really good. Yeah. Thank um, you. Well, thank whoever posted it. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, Hopefully they're listening and they learned something. That would be good. That would be great. Yeah. Well, you know, mm-hmm. when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, or in this case, four teachers. You know, it just depends on yes. what you're listening to. But. <laughs> uh, Bill, I'm going to come to you next. You got a question for us we can address? Yes, I do. Right. Um, having to do with resistance. Resistance. How, how do you deal with resistance when you're working on creating something new in your life? Uh, for example, um, <clears throat> when you're trying to... Uh, 
uh, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give an example. Uh, my wife is, we're working on moving to New Hampshire because we, my wife got a, a, um, a job offer at an acupuncture clinic there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we're now, she's now starting the process of getting her licensure in New Hampshire because each state has a separate licensure. Right. And so she was working on that today. And she discovered that, um, it was going to cost a certain, you know, cost a, a couple hundred dollars to do this. There was, um, a, the school that she went to, the graduate school she went to in New York City, she just found out closed last year. So, uh, she wasn't sure who to call to get her transcripts <laughs> sent to the, uh, to the, to the, the, the board. And, uh, she found out the, the, the NCCAOM, which is the National Acupuncture Standards Board. Uh, there was maybe some resistance there too, because, uh, they don't have her listed as being a current member at this point, And now they gotta switch, change that and whatever. So there's some resistance there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the question to the group is, um, how do you, how would you deal with that kind of Resistance where you're trying to deliberately create something new, but now you're, you're finding that it's not as smooth as it was before. That, that you expected. It's not, it's not as smooth as the, your expectation was. Yeah. Or at least the expectation that you hoped for. <laughs> right. You, you were like, please work out this way. <laughs> mm-hmm. So good question. Okay. Shelly, I'm going to go to you. What do you think? What's the best way to deal with uh, that kind of a resistance situation? Um, I think that when you're running into resistance like that, when you're, when you, you have a goal and you're trying really hard and you're trying to do it like, it sounds like she's trying to do it like she had done before and she just keeps running into all these roadblocks, mm-hmm. um, is to just get open. I always just describe it as like a horse with blinders on to take the blinders off and see the 360 view. Like there's, there's, other options out there for what she's trying to do, but because mm-hmm. she's so focused on this one way that it needs to go, right. um, she's, she's getting all this resistance instead of just maybe taking a day and just going, I'm not going to work on this today. I'm just going to, I'm going to do some things that I enjoy and I'm going to let it go and let go of the resistance. And when, when you stop pushing on something, that's when, a lot of the creativity will start to happen and the universe kind of provides that, you know, all things will start falling into place like, Oh, that she'll get a phone call back that she didn't think she was ever going to get or, you know, that sort of thing. So that would be my suggestion is just to find a way to let go of the oars and float down the river a little bit. Always a challenge, but yeah, that's definitely a good thing to do. Alex, what do you think? What's, what's the, the other piece of information we need on this? I was going to say the exact same thing that Shelly just said and add to it, you know, look for other avenues, mm-hmm. uh, all while taking the blinders off, you know, and, and taking a day off and letting, letting the universe work it, work its magic and do its, do what it's supposed to do. But also, you know, look, look for other ways to work or work around the river as you're floating down. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like. <laughs> There's many ways to get to the other side of the land, you know? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that before. Work around the river. That's pretty cool. <laughs> when, you, when you see the rapids, when you see the rapids ahead, you could always take your canoe out of the river. That's right. And walk around, walk the, around river. the rapids. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. That's good. The other thing I I th- thought of too when you were talking about your example, Bill, and I've been dealing with stuff of, of my own along this line in the last week or so. It's hard to do, but if you can have the presence of mind to notice that you are running into resistance and to remember that resistance is not a bad thing, that's a good place to be in if you can get there. It's not easy to get there. But the reason I say it's not a bad thing is resistance is, first of all, where we do our growing. I mean, we come into this world to experience the contrast, and the contrast means running into stuff that we don't like, and stuff we don't like, we resist. So mm-hmm. whenever we run into resistance, that basically means, up, oh, we found some more contrast to grow off of. Not right. an easy way to look at it, but if you can look at it that way, 
I, I, I know that on those occasions, and they are not frequent, but on those rare occasions where I've been able to do that, I have either found a new solution that I didn't know about before or that I hadn't thought of, or I find myself in some way reducing the angst associated with the resistance or you know, some other shift happens. There's, all, there's almost always some kind of shift that happens in, in the experience of it. Um, and the shift is almost always, if, because I'm recognizing, I'm noticing the resistance is there and I'm not treating it as a negative. I'm just saying it's just right. there. When, when I'm able to get into that space, more good things happen. And it's kind of hard to quantify them, but they really do. More good things happen. That's what I find. I mean, what's your experience, Bill? I mean, it was your question. How do you answer it? Well, um, to, well, to answer the situation with uh, what happened with Nina today is that she did take a day off. She did um, look for other avenues. And by the end of the day, um, she found a way of getting her transcripts transferred from Vermont over to New Hampshire without a problem. Cool. She found a way... To the NCCOM called her up and said, Oh, this was a terrible mistake. We're going to fix this ah. and we're going to, we're going to reinstate you. And, <clears throat> and so it was just a matter of just, okay, I'm going to let go now and say, and think, okay, a school doesn't exist anymore. Who do you call to get your transcripts? Actually, there's a few people you can call to get your transcripts. You mm. can call the state board of education, the the, uh, the the state board of education. You can call the the people who actually have that official transcript. And that was my first suggestion: go to mm-hmm. Vermont first. They got your official transcript. Have them fax it over to New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. No big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, there's a, the the important point here, though, is what is the difference between resistance and a block? Because a block is the universe saying, don't go that way. It's a, it's, it is a, it is a dead, it's telling you, stop. You know, you are, you are, if you try and push through this block, you're only going to make your life more miserable or you're moving <laughs> in the wrong direction. And so it, what a lot of people misinterpret, they misinterpret resistance as a block and p- some people uh, misinterpret a block as resistance. So if you think a block is actually just resistance, you're going to find yourself banging your head against a wall and not getting anywhere. <clears throat> if you're into it, but if you misinterpret a resistance that is a block, then you end up not doing what you need to be doing to grow because you're too afraid or you, you're too, uh, tunnel visioned to be moving into the, into the direction you, you really should be going. Uh, that, does that make sense? That, that's a distinction I've never heard before. The, the the distinction you're drawing between a block and resistance that's 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 a new one. Oh, I mean, because so. there's there's some things that a lot of us do that we shouldn't be doing because it's just not in our high it's it's not in our highest good. It's not in our highest destiny. And it, and a great example of that was when I was working the corporate world. It, no matter how many jobs I got, I had a lot of jobs out there. <laughs> And no matter how many jobs I got, I always got to a point where I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere, that there was no growth happening anymore, or actually there there wasn't any growth in the first place. And so I'm like, okay, now, all right, now I'm getting a boss that I, that, that I don't get along with or whatever. And okay, if I just pivot this a little bit and make it a little easier or whatever, maybe I'll make it better. And sometimes it gets a little bit better. But it was never really great. It didn't give me that that wonderful, great feeling. And it's because I was doing the wrong thing. <laughs> it was, I wasn't doing what was in my highest good. And so in my in myself, in my soul, it was being I felt like I was um you know dragging my feet all the time. I felt like I wasn't I was hitting my head against a wall. I was trying to make something better that shouldn't that didn't need to get better. It needed to stop. <laughs> okay. Because I needed to be doing something else. I needed to be doing something that fed my soul rather than making something that I felt was draining it. Okay. Well, it, it's an interesting take. I like it. Um, and it's one I'll, I'll be giving some thought to uh, in the days ahead, I'm sure. 
Now, I'm going to come to Shelly in a minute to see what questions she's got. But before she does, Jeffrey actually posted a question. I wanted to make sure I got to it. Um, it was actually a, kind of a follow-up to what he asked before. Remember, before he asked, uh, what does it feel like to live on the leading edge? The, the follow-up to that is, how do we relate the leading edge to what Abraham calls step five? Because, of course, Abraham now has the five-step process instead of the three-step process. Step five being where you now embrace the contrast so you can go into your next step one and keep the cycle going. Okay. So how do we relate being on the leading edge to step five? And it's, it's kind of a broad question. Um Anybody, I'm not even going to assign this one. Anyone want to step and say, yeah, I want to go for this one? I will, if that's go, okay. <laughs> go for it. Um, I just think that that's, we were just talking about that last night. Mm, um, we talking were. about the, the process and how you can take advantage of the contrast because the, the contrast is there for a reason, just like, what you were just saying about, you know, having that job and getting another job and hoping that it would be better and, you know, it not getting any better. And you basically just going through that and going through that until you were pushed to make a big, huge change because it was getting so bad, you know, it just didn't feel good. And so I just think that that, that fifth step of, of, I'm assuming is recognizing the contrast and using that to um, push yourself to the next level um, is just when you get to that point, I just look at it as, at it as an adventure. Um, you know, I was talking, I was talking last night to Walt about how I've been, you know, really struggling. I do reselling. So I resell clothes on eBay and Poshmark and stuff. And so I was just getting fed up with it. I've been doing it for years. I was getting drained and burnt out and, I was literally like, you know, having a tizzy fit, you know, not (laughs) blaming anyone, but just kind of going off to my husband about how I hate it. And I just want to blow it all in the truck and take it to Goodwill and do something different. And, And but even in that, in that, that venting and everything in the back of my head, I knew that that was going to lead to something better. I knew I wasn't actually going to do that but I knew that it was going to open some doors and some options for me to make it better somehow. And I did, I I managed to figure out how to purge a bunch of stuff and it's working out great and I'm back and I'm selling stuff like crazy. And that was just like two weeks ago. So I think it just becomes this adventure where you have this contrast and you get frustrated, but even though you're frustrated, you know, it's going to be this new thing that's going to be awesome that you have to get through to. So, so, so the embracing, the, so the embracing part's really big then. I mean, that, that's kind of what we've been talking yeah. about in a number of ways here, but you're, you're, you're saying, okay, this yeah. is good. I mean, other people say this is not a good thing. You're saying, Hey, let's go. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good attitude to have. That's good. Alex, you've had, you're, you're sitting there very quietly and I don't know if I'm going to uh, be smart coming to you or not about this, but I, I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> Because when you're quiet, it's not always a good sign. Yeah, I mean, usually you're just like bubbling over. And we're like, I got, I got answer. Here's my hand raised. I'm ready. And you're just sitting there going very quiet. So, so I'm, I'm kind of daring things I'm, a little bit here. I'm just thinking because, um, I mean, I, I, I feel like it goes back to what we were just talking about, about, about taking different avenues and, and, and like, like you said, embracing the contrast and going, going with the flow. You know, it's, it's, if something's telling you to go a different way, then try a different way. Mm-hmm. If that's, if that's what you need to do, mm-hmm. you know, cause universe is only going to hit you with a two by four for so many times until <laughs> it gives up. And then it's like, you're not even worth it. So <laughs> moving on. <laughs> you realize you just took, you, you took self abuse to a new level with that analogy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if we can get back to a, a more uh, pain-free approach. Bill, what do you think? What, what's the the answer to what's it like living on leading edge from a uh, fifth step point of view? <clears throat> well, um, I have to confess that I'm not that familiar with the five steps of Abraham. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in a nutshell, it's it's the, the first step is uh, to know what you want and shoot out that rock of mm-hmm. desire, right? So that's the okay. ask part. 
there's, there's the believe part. Yes, I believe it's coming. There's the receive part. And then once you've gone through that, now you're going to start ratcheting back, not ratcheting, but you're, you're going to start, uh, getting excited off it. You're going to, you're going to grow off it. And the growth is mm-hmm. kind of like the, the step four. And then step five, it's like, okay, I've, I've had this great growth. Let's do it again. Let's find the next mm-hmm. thing to get excited about. The next thing is going to be the next piece of contrast. The next piece of contrast is going to create some sort of issue. And that's going to create a step one where a rocket of desire goes off. So it becomes an endless cycle, so to speak. That, that, that's not yeah. precisely the way they describe it, but that's the, that's the gist of it. Okay. That sounds great. Um, so being on the, uh, I guess being on the leading edge of that, well, it's, it's very, it's very exciting to live your life that way. Because what's cool about that is you create something cool, you create something wonderful, and then you get to the point where, okay, now I can drop it. Now I can put that aside and go to the next great thing. And I mean, and you, again, you know, you're on the right path of your life because a lot of people, you know, approach law of attraction or they approach any, any kind of self-help, um, thing looking for the thing, the one thing. I'm looking for the perfect partner. I'm looking for the perfect job or the perfect career. The, the, the one thing. And the thing is, life doesn't give you just one thing. Love, life gives you a whole bunch of different stuff. And even when you are in that highly creative, uh, building place, eventually, and you build something really wonderful, eventually you're going to have to put it down and pick up something else. Um, it could be related. It could be building off the older thing. Sure. Or it could be something completely different. Mm-hmm. And uh, and life's really cool that way. Um, and, and if you just look at uh, your own... I mean, those of us who have been around for a little while, we you look backwards of all the different careers that you've had and all the different projects you've done in your life. And some of them you were really, really excited about and some of them maybe not so excited about. But the ones you were really, really excited about and really, really proud of 10, 20 years ago, would you be doing them right now? (laughs) Probably not because you used that project, that wonderful thing that you did 20 years ago to build something off of. Um, And a great example, I guess, for my own life is um, 20 years ago, I was uh, I was teaching Reiki, and I wrote my own textbooks and whatever, and I was using the Yasui method, and I had students, and I was building something really wonderful. But then, you know, life changed, and my interests changed, and so I was able to put that down. But I still look back at that, and I'm like, wow, you know, you built something really cool there. <laughs> and it led me to spiritual response therapy. And... It was, it was a, that was a really cool thing. Will I pick it up now and start teaching Reiki again? No, no, I don't think so. It's, it's done its piece. It's done. I've, now I've built on that and I'm doing something new. That's good. That's good. Whenever I think about the five step Abraham process, I, I think about it in terms of not just one thing after another, but I mean, literally we're dealing with lots of things throughout our lives, mm-hmm. often multiple things at one time. You know, in that sense, we tend to multitask, which isn't always the best thing to do, but you know, we're just dealing with a lot of stuff that's happening. And it kind of reminds me of, of the really, really old video game Pac-Man. Remember Pac-Man? We have a little guy, mm-hmm. he goes around, and he's <laughs> gobbling up all these little bits of food and dots and all this kind of stuff. You're trying to gobble up mm-hmm. as much as you can. Well, we're Pac-Men. We're, we're, we're going through life. You know, here's some contrast. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. We're constantly walking through life, grabbing all this contrast. Grab, 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 grab. And living with it and, and learning from it. And, and in some cases, getting stuck in it. And other cases, growing through it. But, but it, it, it's not like you can actually go through life without having it. There, I've never heard of anybody mm-hmm. who had a life where there's no contrast. I'm not sure it's even mm-hmm. possible. I mean, maybe if you hide out in the wilderness and you know, do a thorough go to Walden Pond, but even there you're going to have some contrast. I mean, there's just, it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the physical existence is all about contrast. It really it's is. why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we, we talk about a step five <laughs> moment, but they're all step five moments. And every single one of them almost happening simultaneously. You can't really get away from them. So you either embrace mm-hmm. them or you run away one or the other. And when you run away, you still get them. <laughs> Welcome to physical reality. So, okay, Shelly, I've given you a little time to come up with a topic. What do you think? What's what's our next question to address? Well, I could just go with something personal. Um, and I 
asked this question, well, some similar questions before. So I have a 16-year-old son who is also transgender, female to male, and he takes testosterone, and he is a, he's my artist and my challenge and my, he's all, we're both Tauruses. I don't know how much you, any of you guys delve into, you know, the signs and everything, but we tend to butt heads, and then we also totally understand each other, too, because we're both in that same sign. And so it's just, so he's been giving himself tattoos since he was about 13 or 14 with with just ink and needle. He does not have a tattoo gun because I will not let him have one because (laughs) I don't want someone banging on my door upset that my child gave their child a tattoo. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so he's 18 and can take on that responsibility, he will not be receiving a tattoo <laughs> gun. As much as I would love to give him one because I think that he would he's just going to be amazing when he takes off with that. So this morning when we were heading out the door, I noticed he had an, a Band-Aid on his finger. Like, not on the end of his finger, but the base of his finger. And I'm like, what is that? Because I knew what it was. Uh-huh. Just, I just, yeah. And I'm just like, and he just looked. I'm like, give me your phone. You know, I was like half joking, but I'm just like, dang it. You know, we, I told you to stop doing this. And, and they're all just these little tiny things. He's got a little Saturn on one of his fingers. Well, he put a little moon on the side of his finger. And... He showed me on his phone because he took a picture of it and he had, he didn't want to take the bandaid off because it's healing or whatever. And I'm just. Right. And so like the whole, like I'm, you know, as we're driving to school, I'm just like, oh, like part of me just wants to, you know, shake you. <laughs> and the other part of me is just like, why am I stifling this with him? So I'm just in this like turmoil with him. And I finally just looked at him and I said, and he just kind of looked at me and I just shook my head and I said, I'm surrendering with love. Like, that's what I have to do with you because (laughs) you are on your path and you are so, I mean, like, he's so determined, you know, from like 11 or 12, he started this transgender thing. And so it was just like that. And I'm a super open person. Like, I'm always like, you know, you can be whatever color and whatever, you know, religion and whatever gender and sexual preference. I have zero problem with any of that. When it happens in your house, it is, um, I want to say mind blowing for lack of a better term. It's just like, what the hell is happening? Like, this is my daughter. Like, this is my daughter, and now she wants to be a boy. And, okay, so how are we going to deal, you know, going to counseling, going and seeing the the medical doctor for the test doc, and, you know, all this stuff. And, meanwhile, I've got relatives that are like, why are you letting him do that? At 15, you're letting him take testosterone. That's going to screw up his body so bad. And I'm like, he, this is, you know. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. I mean, we all screw up our bodies. We screw up our bodies just eating food, you know, in the society. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, so anyways, so I'm just like wondering what your guys' opinions are on just kind of surrendering to that whole thing. He's going to be 17 in May. He's going to be 18 in a little over a year. And I just feel like I'm trying so hard to like hang on and guide him and, and, You know, my husband's just from that that whole mindset of, you know, you kind of do what you're I mean, he's open to so much stuff because of this what happened. But, you know, he's just kind of like, well, he should just do what we say. And I know if I told him, yeah, he he gave himself another tattoo. He's you know, then there's going to be this big discussion. Like, should we ground him or, you know, it's just like it is what it is. Like, we can't take it away. (laughs) It's just just like so like I just am. I just feel like I'm kind of, and this is just how I felt for a while with him. Like, I'm just kind of at a loss. Like, okay, I love you. You're this creative little person coming into this world, and I just have to, like, surrender to it. I just have to 
stop trying to push so hard. So I'm just curious. I'll you, you know what I love about that <laughs> question? That question's about 17 questions. All wrapped up in the I love it. <laughs> it is. It, it, it so well illustrates the angst you're dealing with. Like you're trying to be, you're trying to surrender to this. You're trying to relax to it. And, and it, it, you're almost like a boxer who's punch drunk from all the punches you've been getting in the ring. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> We can do a whole show on just that topic. I, we could yeah. do three or four of them, I think. <laughs> yeah, three or four of them, yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I, I can take, I can take this one. Go for it. Um, okay. Um, as much as we'd like to think that, uh, we are, uh, as parents, cause you know, I've got a 10 year old that we are like the most open, on, open, loving people possible. Um, as parents, we have expectations, and right. those expectations are usually dictated by our uh, our own upbringing, our own beliefs, and our own expectations of what our good little children should be doing <laughs> with their lives. My my son, when I grew up, I was I was outside all the time playing with my friends and whatever. My son. Uh, his definition of a good time is sitting in front of his computer, uh, playing video games and meeting all of his friends are virtual. And again, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's where he's comfortable. It's where, what, how he lives his life. And I, I have to accept that. I don't have to like it. I don't have to, um, buy into it. I don't have to be a participate in it, but. That's his path and whatever. I, and I, but the thing is, there's still a part of me that's like, that's not right. That's not, that's not the way that a, a 10 year old boy should be behaving. He should be outside. He should be riding a bike and whatever. He still, I still can't, he still doesn't know how to ride a bicycle. I mean, I've taught him a little bit, but then, you know, he tried, he rides the bike around the, the, the driveway for a little bit and he's like, okay, I'm done. And so, <laughs> And then the thing is, I gotta I'll be like, and then when I'm like, hey, you know, we gotta do this, you know, because he's really gotta learn how to ride a bicycle. My wife, you know, my wife's like, why? Where does he have to go? Right. <laughs> we homeschool. And she, and she was like, well, why did you ride, learn how to ride a bike? Well, because I lived in a in a town where the only way to get from point A to point B was to ride a bicycle. Well, so, point, point A to point B is from the bedroom to, to the computer. <laughs> it's from the bedroom. Yes. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's not a long distance there to ride the bike. You know? <laughs> right. And um, I have a uh, I have a long term client right now who is 18 years old and autistic, and um, so and it's it is a combination where it's his mother and the son, and I see the son, but the mother is the one who is. Wanting the therapy for her son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she has an expectation that he is going to be a normal 18 year old boy. And I had to sit her down one time and say, your son is not never going to be a normal 18 year old boy because he is, first of all, he's autistic. Second of all, he's got a different view on life than you do. And you just have to accept that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for your 16 year old, uh, I bet you what, after he turns 18, he's probably going to be a kick butt tattoo artist. <laughs> yeah, I totally believe that. And yeah. you know, by the time he's like 25 and whatever, there's probably going to every square inch of his body is going to probably be covered in ink. And <laughs> that's going to, and it's going to have to be, a, and if that's his path and that's, and that's how he expresses himself artistically, that's great. And so, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for, me, for me, it's not even so much the tattoos. Like I, like mm -hmm. seriously, if I, if I knew that he would just stick to, you know, tattooing oranges and bananas for practice, I would get him a tattoo gun because I think it would be really important for him right now. But it's not so much that it's just that we, you know, he's probably got like four or five little tattoos on him right now that he's given right. himself. And it's like, 
I've asked him to stop, and it's more like the respect. Like he just he isn't gonna stop, and he knows that he knows that I'm not gonna like you know ground him for life because he put another right. tattoo on his hand because because there's a huge part of me that's just like I think that's really cool that you're doing that. You're not legally you shouldn't be doing that because right. you're 16, you know. And but so for me it's almost more like the respect like yeah I don't, I don't know I just and, when, and then and then I look at my relationship with my mom when I was 16 and there wasn't a lot of respect yeah. <laughs> and it repeats itself doesn't it because I yeah. think back to the kind of stuff that I put my own parents through when I was 16 18 years old and then mm-hmm. I look at what my son's doing or I'm looking at what my client's doing too I'm like that's tame <laughs> <laughs> You, the, the, you, these kids are angels. <laughs> it reminds me of what, what Robin Williams said. He he described how uh, he was finding his son picking up on his own habits. He was a comedian, of course, and he would tell jokes that were not always clean jokes and so forth. And his jokes are his son's telling the same jokes in school, and the school's calling up saying your son told a very interesting joke today, and you know that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and Robin describes how he, he could just imagine sitting over his shoulder going, "Ha ha ha! Revenge is mine." <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Alex? You got any input you want to give? Well, as the person who's on the podcast re- currently right now, closer to 16 than any of you guys, <laughs> I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you from the kid's point of view. Like and I'm going to say um, that I would ta- I would have a conversation with him about the fact that you feel disrespected when he when he does the tattooing. And if he could re- refrain from doing them on himself till he's at least 18, where you can, or make a deal with him, say, I'll get you a tattoo gun when you turn 18, if you refrain from doing the tattoos. But just, you know, because there's a certain, like, in in the one sense, you're, like, proud of him because he's so artistic and he's really great at it. But at the same time, you know, you got to be a parent and you got to be like, listen, come on now, let's 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 settle down. So I would just let him know, you know, speak to him and get to, get on his level and speak to him and let him know how you feel. Okay, that's good. I, I'm I'm actually going to give a, a a slight variation on what you guys have been talking about, and I'm going to talk from the point of view of being the oldest person here. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and my viewpoint is, I'm really hey, impressed. <laughs> I'm really impressed by kids because I, I don't remember who one of my co-hosts pointed this out. Uh, many months ago, but kids are really amazing when it comes to sharing with us what we have often forgotten about what it's like to be connected to source because they are more recently than us connected in a big way to source. They ha- they have a better memory of it than we do. And the younger the kid is, mm-hmm. the more true that is. Um, yep. Because of that, I love paying attention to what the kids are having to, to tell us. I may not always like what it is that they're choosing to do, but the messages are always really powerful. So I'm going to kind of step in on your son's side and say, I want to know more about what your son is thinking and doing and, and planning. I mean, there, there's this clear direction going on, right? You know, he's heading toward becoming a tattoo artist. But I want to know what's driving him. I want to know why that's so exciting to him. Because there's something in there. there there's, there's, some, there's something that he's going to contribute to mankind as a whole, to himself, to his friends and family. There, there's some major contribution that's coming out of that. And I don't know what it is, but I really would like to know. So, um, I mean, I, I think there's a side that, that, that says, you know, there, there's some interesting wonder going on here. I wonder what it's about. I think it's going to be cool, whatever it is. Um, now, that doesn't, well, mean that, that, that doesn't make it easy for you to deal with it as a parent. I'm just saying there's that side of it. That's all. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's... That's kind of where I'm coming from with the surrender and love. It's just, I've just kind of reached this point where I love him and I think he's amazing. And I think he's an amazing artist and he's an amazing, he's in drama. He's an amazing actor. He's a good friend. You know, he's not a rebellious little jerk, you Mm -hmm. know, but he does, he makes bad decisions sometimes, but so do we, you know, we all do that throughout our whole lives. And, and so mm-hmm. I was just thinking, like, what's the easiest thing for me to do and say to him right now? And I was getting myself kind of all worked up, you know, 
just in my head. I wasn't saying anything to him. And then I was just like, the easiest thing for me to do right now is just to surrender to this and mm-hmm. just love him for who he is yeah. and quit trying to stifle him and quit trying to direct him. He's going to be 18 in a year and like two months. Like, and from that mm-hmm. point on, you know, I'm sure he'll still be at home for a while and stuff like that. But, but it's like he, then he's responsible for himself. He can mm-hmm. make his own decisions. He can, you know, He'll be graduating shortly after he turns 18 and, you know, he can, you know, and he know, he, like I've even given him those options, you know, with school. Like if you really want to get creative and spend your days doing something other than school, if you want to study to get your GED, that's okay, but you're going to do that. You're not just going to sleep all day and, you know, stay up all night playing games on your computer, you know, talking about the gaming computer. He does have the best computer in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, yeah, so it's like, you know, I give him choice. He's got choices. He doesn't have to go to high school. And I, I respect that. I'm not huge into college. And, and you know, I think you should do what you want. And if college is the avenue for that, great. Then be college bound. But they push it so hard right now oh, yeah. for everybody mm-hmm. to do that. You know? But anyways, um, yeah, so that's just what felt good to me in the moment. And I just was kind of curious what your guys' thoughts on I, that I think you're right. Were, so you. I, and I would take the Thank advantage you. of it. I would take advantage of, of the opportunity because, like you said, he's still home for now. You know, while he's home, mm-hmm. find out more about what, what's driving him. You know, obviously this is really important to you. Obviously you think this is really good stuff. I'd like to know what it is that, that, that you're finding so great about it. I'd like to share it in the joy with you, if I can. Can you help me understand it? You know, get him, get to know him a little bit better in that sense. Getting to explain to you yeah. so, so that that you're he feels like you're a part of what it is that he's doing instead of uh, you know this antagonistic wall over there who constantly butt head, butts heads with him you know which I'm sure you don't do because like you said you're you're doing a lot of the surrendering surrendering and loving uh, but you know join in the fun there's, there's got to be a fun side to it find out what it is mm-hmm. well that's my take on it. Um, and by the mm-hmm. way we're getting a lot of really positive comments from people listening in people are loving this. Um, Talking about you know how uh, they're loving Lynn in particular was saying how much she really appreciated your your viewpoint, um, Shelley about you know, just accepting and and uh, you know just just loving him as he is. She, she was really loving that. Jeffrey was saying so too. He loves he well he's part of the LGBT um, community and and he he's seeing this as being very very receptive. So good all the way around. Mm-hmm. Congratulations for for having the uh, the openness that you have. That's great. And to all of us for being so. So accepting of it. Um, let's see. Who's? I, I think it's my turn to come up with a question. Well, actually, it's not. We're out of time. I just realized that we're past an hour, aren't we? <laughs> well, we're not quite past an hour. We actually started a little bit late. We got. We actually have about two minutes left. So we'll, we'll do a little summing up. I, oh, and I just realized I haven't done anything in like a week to ask people to become subscribers. So if you've been listening all this time to all these shows and you haven't become a subscriber, now is the time I'm going to remind you about it. And it's really easy to do. Just go to the homepage of the website, LOAToday.net, and you'll find the link there for your device. And just click it, and it'll walk you through the process of becoming a subscriber. And then all the episodes come right to your smartphone every single day, and you can listen to them whenever you want to because they're all just queued up right there. Um, and then also after you subscribe and as you're listening to the episodes, please do share the fact that you're listening because we want more and more people to find out about it. Uh, we want more and more people to, uh, you know, get their daily dose of happy from us and, and participate in our little community we're building here. So help us to do that and, and share the fact of what you're loving in your life and what you're loving about the show. Um, let's see. The last takes here. Bill, uh, I know you had a book come out. Uh, anything that you want that you want people to know about how to reach you as a coach? What's, what's your little thing that you want to put out there real quick? Okay. Um, I can be reached um, at ninag.com, N-I-N-A-G-E-E.com. Uh, my, my books are the uh, Spirit Path Book of Days and Conscious, Conscious Conduit, The User's Guide to Ascension. And those are, they're both available on Amazon. And, uh, uh, and uh, if you want to know more about me and what I do, uh, the books are actually a great source to uh, just get a primer on on all that. Sounds good. And, and uh, Alex, is the uh, the new episode of the podcast out yet? The new episode of the podcast is out yet, but I feel like I have to do another episode because we just lost Luke Perry mm. at the age of fifty-two. Yeah, it was. And 
Yeah, he was. Ju- he's on a current popular TV show, so I feel like I need to do another episode. Mm, yeah, that, that's a good thing to do. But uh, and how mm-hmm. to remind people how they can find your podcast? What's the name of it again? Spoil. It's called Spoiler Alert. You Spoiler can find Alert. it on Spotify or on Anchor FM. All right, good. And uh, Shelly, I don't. I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Do you have anything that you want to let people know about in terms of reaching you? No, not right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're too busy dealing with your 16-year-old, so it's quite understandable. That's right. I don't, have, I don't have time for that. <laughs> That's totally understandable. Totally understandable. Yeah. And on that cheery note, I will thank Bill and Alex and Shelly for joining us, Shelly especially for jumping in because that was a nice surprise. And also to our live stream listeners and to our existing listeners as well, thank you for listening. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.